Take a look at these pictures and this prompt. Purple and yellow abstract collage in the style of graffiti inspired portraiture. Light cyan and black. Mixed patterns. Gutai group. Mundane materials. Serene faces. Close up. I got this prompt from the describe feature, but how are we supposed to know which of these words actually matter to the bot? Well, it's actually very easy to find out, and it involves the most timeless technique in science. Isolating variables. We are going to keep the strongest variable the same while changing another to see the effect. And that strong variable is the seed number. You see, Midjourney has over 4 billion seeds. There are over 4 billion outcomes for each prompt you write. And the system chooses randomly for you every time you generate. You can react to any of your images with the envelope emoji. And the bot will send you a seed number to that image you created. This will help you recreate a set of images if you run the exact same prompt with the exact same seed number on the exact same version. Now that's great and all, but the true value of seeds is to help us test out the effect of individual words. And we can do that by specifying a seed number ourselves by adding dash dash seed space and then a number between 1 and 4 billion at the end of our prompt. Personally, based on this prompt, I wanted to know what Gutai group really meant to the generation. So I'm going to run that exact same prompt again, but I'm also going to choose a seed number to run this test on. It does not matter what seed number you choose. I literally hit random numbers on the keyboard. So these images are what this prompt creates on seed number 686320. Pretty cool pictures, but that's not what we're here for. Now we are going to run this exact prompt minus the word we're testing, which is Gutai group, along with the seed number we just used. This is what it will look like. Every word the same except for that word we're testing. We keep the same seed number, and these are the results. I'll flip back and forth between them, but keep your eye on number four. What do you notice? It's the same, right? I mean, as close to similar as possible. I'm talking specifically about the lines on the skin. That appears in both of the images. Now what that tells me is that Gutai group really had no effect on the end result of the prompt. The results of these generations are practically the same. Granted, they are not completely the same, they're not exactly twins. But when you're testing out certain words to see if there's a difference, what we want to see is a difference. And personally, I don't think I see that here at all. However, using this prompt, I can show you a group of words that do make a difference. We're running the entire original prompt here on seed number 942424. And this is what it creates, a bunch of beautiful faces. Now, what I was really wondering about was this part of the prompt in the style of graffiti inspired portraiture. How much did that phrase affect the generation? So we're gonna run the test again by excluding that part of the prompt, but we are going to keep the same seed number. And these are the results. What do you notice? I think, in my opinion, there is a big difference. We are no longer getting faces in one, two, and four. Sure, there are some in number three, but I think the differences between the other parts of the grid are big enough to say that that phrase makes a difference. In fact, this is a good example of what seeds actually do. If anything, they can keep a similar shape between prompts. So take a look at number one. There are some silhouettes here as we move from the yellow to the purple to the black to the purple to the yellow over to the blue. Now let's look at what happens in the original prompt with the portraiture included. We have the same color setup, but faces appear here. Again, that tells me that something like portraiture really matters to the bot. It sort of brings out facial features and elements like that. Isn't that interesting? Isn't that fascinating? That's what prompt engineering is really about in Midjourney testing individual words while isolating a key variable. That variable is the seed number. If you have fast hours to spare and want to run these tests at a quicker pace, you can write your prompts using permutations. And I think this could be good for testing similar batches of words to see if what you choose really matters. Like a miniature superhero speeding, rushing, racing, hurrying, down a busy street full of angry dinosaurs. Then I chose a completely random seed number. We are going to enclose the words we want to test within those squiggly brackets. And when we hit enter, it's going to ask us if we want to imagine all of those prompts. We can hit show prompts to see if we made any mistake while writing it. Everything looks good here, and we can click yes, and it will generate all of them for us. Again, that really just helps us speed up the flow of these tests. Now, do you think there's going to be a difference between speeding and racing down a street? I don't know. 
but this is how you test it. Here's the miniature superhero speeding. This is sort of gonna be our base canvas and we're going to compare the other words to this generation. Don't worry about tiny small details. The pictures are always going to change when you change the prompt. We're more focused on the goal, the end result. What vibe did we get from using this word and what vibe are we going to get from using the other word? I think if we notice one of these pictures in the grid showing up again, there really is not much of a difference. So from speeding, we'll go to rushing. Is there a difference? What do you notice? One and two are similar, four is slightly different, but three is like the exact same. I'll do a quick little before and after. Da -da, da da like look at that. When that happens, you'll know that there is no difference between speeding and rushing. It means the same thing to mid-journey, and that's how you're going to engineer your prompts effectively. Here's the word racing, and maybe you could argue we get something slightly different. I think number one is cool, number four has its own vibe, number two is sort of similar to the other number threes. When it comes to something like this, it's going to be a personal decision. Don't let this stop you from using different adjectives in your prompts, but if you ever want to be sure of what you did, this is how you would test it. And finally, here is hurrying. I think you could argue that these are different enough to place them in their own category. I like number two a lot. Now that's what the process will look like when you're testing similar words, but I think this whole thing works even better when you test a bigger dichotomy. Like, stock photography of an excited old man when he sees who is at the door. We lock in the seed number and we get these pictures. Pretty cool. Same seed number, same prompt, except we're going to be using the word disappointed instead of excited. And these are what we get. Same similar groupings of the old man, but the feeling, the expression has completely changed. And this is a fun way to see how Midjourney interprets the adjectives you use. I also recommend testing art styles or artists in the same way. Because there are over 4 billion seeds, the only way to test a prompt accurately is to keep the seed the same. If you don't, any differences you notice between prompts could be entirely random, like one in four billion random. And some of you might not be comfortable using artists in your prompts, so this is how you would test whether you really need their name or not. Like here, I found this prompt and described. A man and his grandson standing by the side of a street in the style of Lizette model. Intuitive gestures, 1920s Yankee core, candid photojournalism, childlike innocence, photo montage. But it appears as though Lizette model is a real person. An Austrian born American photographer. So I'm gonna run this prompt using her name and a specific seed number. This is what we get. Running the same prompt without her name on the same seed number and this is what we get. I think this proves that her name does not really matter that much to the rest of the prompt, and therefore you might be more comfortable leaving her name out of it. That's the power of seeds. That's how we can really know what we're doing. Permutations and seed testing works great when you're trying to prompt for a person. Like here, a fierce female warrior prepares for a battle on a beach. The weather is overcast. I want to see the prompt just like that, but I also want to see what the prompt looks like when I adjust her hairstyle. So I start the permutation with a squiggly bracket, I use a comma, and I'm going to say the female warrior has. Then I'm going to place another open squiggly bracket, and I'm going to list my hairstyles. French braided hair, pigtail hair, pink and blue hair, red hair, green hair, burning, flaming, sparkling, fiery hair, and finally cartoon anime hair. I'm going to close that with a squiggly bracket, and I'm going to close the whole thing with another squiggly bracket. That's a little advanced way of using permutations. Don't worry about that too much for now. Just remember that what you're testing goes inside of squiggly brackets. And then we're going to test it on seed 3647974. Here's the first foundational prompt. Fierce female warrior, weather is overcast. Cool pictures, sure, why not? But now we get into the tests. The female warrior has French braided hair. I think these look pretty amazing. I love number two a bunch. It's that specific hairstyle. Same prompt, same seed number, except we have the warrior has pink and blue hair. These are pretty cool. Here's pigtail hair, and I don't think I worded that quite correctly. The results weren't great. Not what I was looking for. Here it is with green hair. I like these a lot as well. Red hair looks great. Cartoon anime hair didn't seem to do anything. I'll make a note of that. Now I know that's not the right words to use whatever I was describing. And then we have burning, flaming, sparkling, fiery hair. <laughs> And these are great. Number two might be a little too much. I like the idea though, right? Now there are a few more quick notes about seeds in case you're wondering. Cinematic still of a dog wizard casting a spell through its mouth. Seed 935893. 
Pretty cool pictures. What I want to point out is that re-rolling this prompt will give you an entirely new seed number even if you specify a seed number up here. You see the seed number didn't show up in the prompt even though that it's showing we made it from the previous seed number. Now we're going to react to this image with the envelope emoji and if you've done this enough times you can actually just right click on an image and the envelope emoji should be there for you. So we see that that grid was created with this new seed number. However what you need to know is that the seed of an upscale is the same seed as the grid meaning that four different images will have the same seed number. And that's why seeds are not the answer to consistency across prompts. Portrait of a female crime scene investigator with platinum blonde hair and a dark green lab coat, seed 72497. These are the women it generates. If we keep that hard of the prompt and add a new action with the same seed number, we are not going to get these same people. Same start of the prompt, but then I added the female is trying to plead her innocence with a robot police officer. Same seed number, and now these are different women. These do not guarantee consistency. They barely guarantee the same shape of what you're going for. Don't let anyone tell you that seeds are the answer to consistency. I just want to be clear on that. Seeds are also only applicable to their current version. Same prompt, same seeds in different versions will generate completely different images. The Degeneration of Society version 6 seed 28054239. Cool, right? Great. Here's the same prompt in 5.2, 5.0, 4, and 3. The seed number does not matter when you're changing versions of mid-journey. Seeds also act a little funny when you're using multi-prompting, but that's a little complicated for this video, so we'll save that for another time. If you're having trouble with any of this, I have some quick troubleshooting advice for you. If you want to find your seed numbers, make sure you go into your settings and allow DMs from strangers so the bot can message you. Furthermore, make sure you are reacting to an image, not replying to it. This is reacting. It'll bring up this list. Replying will bring you down here to the prompt box. We do not want that. And the last thing, make sure you are using the plain envelope emoji. These other ones will not work. Running these tests are great, but if you want to know the best cadence for your prompt, like how long should it be and where should you add details, I think you should watch this video right here. I hope you're doing well. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Peace.